determine the internal shear force. Now, that's brand new, but now we just learned what that means. We're looking for the V, all right? And the moment, oh, that's the M, the bending moment, so the internal shear force and internal bending moment in the beam at section passing through the point C. So here's our point C right there. So we put V sub C and M sub C. Those are our two unknowns. Okay. Uh, here are the answers that we'll solve for. But let's take a look at what we have. We have this horizontal beam. It looks like it's just supported at B. This would be, uh, this support at B uh, would only stop it from falling, but it wouldn't stop it from lifting off of B, would it? See that type of support? It's like standing on the ground. It's, it's just sitting, resting on it, but it would, if it would lift off, it would lift off. Now, the, the, the support at A looks like it would prevent it from lifting off of A. It would actually hold it at A. Okay. A couple moment applied at the tip out here. We have a couple moment applied at the tip out there. And we have a distributed load applied there. So before we go in and make a cut of the section at C and then either analyze the, the, mem the section to the left of the cut or the section to the right of the cut, either one will work. Let's solve for the reactions at the support for the entire beam. So we do an entire beam free body diagram. And we'll put in here this uh, 900 pound foot, couple moment. We'll put in here this A sub Y. In this case, A sub Y can be positive as well as negative. And then here, B sub Y. B sub Y can only be positive. Otherwise, I have a problem. It'll lift off. All right. And then I can replace this distributed load by a point load. Let's put it in the middle. And what would be the magnitude of that point load? Eight times two? 1,600 pounds. You agree? Good. All right. And then we have the couple moment over here. And that's a 900 pound foot. All right. I'm not going to repeat the dimensions, but you could put all the four foots in there and two foots in there as well. All right. Did I get all the loads and forces and supports? Yeah. Okay. How can I solve for, let's say, AY? How would you solve for AY? Some of the forces in the Y, but you have BY is also unknown. Your next favorite equation is moments. Moments about a judicious point that takes B, Y out of the equation. Do it around point B. So if you do the sum of the moments around point B is equal to zero, what do we get? Can you solve for that for me, please? I'm going to pause and walk around and make sure you can do that. So let me pick up here. A lot of times uh, you, you're getting good at these equilibrium equations. A lot of times I'll try and separate everything that makes it want to rotate in the uh, counterclockwise, and then it's balanced by everything that wants to rotate in the clockwise. All I'm doing is some of the moments. So everything, so I look at it and I say, okay, this 900, doesn't that make it want to rotate in the counterclockwise? So I'll put 900 pound foot. All right, and then I look at uh, AY, that's making it want to rotate in the clockwise with the moment arm distance from B over to A is 8 foot. And then the 1,600 pound is making it want to rotate in the counterclockwise, 1,600 pound with the moment arm distance of 4 foot. And then this last thing to consider is this out here. Which way does that make it want to rotate in the clockwise? So 900 pound foot. You just have to write this equation correctly. I like to try to avoid negative signs, and so there you go. Uh, right away we see that they cancel on both sides, so that simplifies the equation. 
and we're left with a sub y equal to 800 pounds. Very good. Now, if you do the sum of the forces in the y, you can get by is equal to 800 pounds, and there you go. But now what we want to do is we want to come over here. We want to do the free body diagram of the section. Uh, I'm going to say A to C. So this section from A to C, it has to include this little tip out here because I'm not cutting it. This is the 900 pound foot. Couple moment. We have solved for the A sub Y equal to 800 pounds. And it's positive upward on that beam. And then I worry a little bit about what is this part of the load. I don't take the 1,600 pounds and apply it at C. What do I do? I take the load that's applied to that section of the beam, which is a distributed load. So I take 800 pounds and apply it in the middle between A and C, right? Wouldn't it be wrong to put 1,600 pounds out here? It would be like applying this distributed load, which isn't applied to A through C. It's applied B and C through B. So that would be an error. Don't do that. All right. All right. And then we come in here. We'll have our shear force V sub C, our normal N sub C and our bending moment M sub C. That's a good free body diagram for the section A to C, true? They didn't ask for N sub C, but if you do the sum of the forces in the X, guess what that is? Zero. But do the sum of the forces in the Y or sum of the moments about a particular point, and then you should be able to solve for our two unknowns, V sub C and M sub C. This is zero. So let me pause and see if you can reproduce those answers. So in the interest of time, let me just say from the sum of the forces in the Y, you get that V sub C is zero. And then uh, sum of the moments around point C equal to zero, that equilibrium equation, then you can calculate that the moment at C is equal to the 700 uh, pound foot. So these answers right here are correct. All right. Okay, can I jump to the next problem?